Hi guys, welcome back if you are returning. Welcome if this is your first time stopping by. If you are newly subscribed, welcome to the family. Today I am bringing you the recipe for a cauliflower pizza crust. Oh well, I'll be making pizzas. <laughs> uh, someone asked me for this, so here it is. I have some cauliflower in my bowl there. I washed and cut up into pieces. If you watched my cauliflower fried rice video, you can either rice your cauliflower in a food processor or use a grater, or you can buy it pre-riced from the store. So here I am ricing it fine, as fine as I can get it. I'll pour it into my bowl and rice the rest of my cauliflower. Don't forget the description box always contains measurements. So there's my cauliflower rice. I'm going to go ahead and steam this. So I have my steamer right there. I am boiling some water in my pot and I will steam this for about 10 to 12 minutes, just until it's nice and tender. All right, 12 minutes later, it is good to go. It's nice and tender. I'm going to allow it to cool and then we'll move on to the next step. Cauliflower contains a lot of water, as you will see shortly. So I'm going to pour this into my cheesecloth. You can use a kitchen towel if you don't have a cheesecloth. Your goal is to squeeze out as much of the water as you can. Otherwise, you will have a nice soggy crust. <laughs> so as you can see, I am doing my best to squeeze out as much of the water as I can. And look at all of that water that came out of that cauliflower. You don't want that in your pizza crust. Now this is all that's left. It looks like very little, but we're going to try to reconstitute it with um, some other ingredients. I'm using about two tablespoons of freshly grated Parmesan cheese, um, one small egg that I have beaten, and then I'm using a seasoning mix. Lastly, I'm going to add a soft cheese. Today I had goat cheese left in the fridge, so I'm using about two tablespoons of that. We're going to work that all in nicely, and we should end up with um, a dough that looks just like this. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and start to form my crust. I have these nice um, mini pizza pans. I'm lining them with parchment paper so that the crust does not stick. Um, and then you're just going to use your fingers to mold this into whatever shape you like and whatever thickness you want. You don't want it too thick or too thin. No need to get fancy with this, guys. Just do what works for you. <laughs> 400 degrees is what I have preheated my oven to, and I'm going to put these in the oven to bake for about 15 minutes. Here we go. I am going to go ahead and take them off the parchment paper, looking nice, and I'm going to flip them over so that they can just brown on both sides. I'll give it five more minutes in the oven and then I'll let it cool so that we can start to top them. And there we have it, nice and crusty. I'm not using sauce, I'm using this tomato paste I had left in the fridge. Again, I don't want my crust to be soggy so I'm doing what I can. I'm sprinkling some um, crushed red peppers on it to give me a kick. This one's going to be a roasted red pepper, onion, mushroom, and sausage pizza. That's chicken sausage. And the other one is going to be a tomato, basil, and mozzarella pizza. I'm going to put these in the oven on grill, not grill, broil, <laughs> high broil for about three to four minutes. I sliced everything thin because I knew that I was going to be broiling it. So um, let's toss these in again for about three to four minutes. Our pizzas should be ready to go. Voila, there we have them, looking good. I've made these before and they were quite delicious. You won't really miss the flour in the crust because these are actually really tasty. The toppings really do make the pizza. Um, there we have it. I'm going to go ahead and slice into these for you so that you can see how nice and well they formed and how you can just hold them just like you would pizza. <laughs> there we have it. The crust part is the, of course, the hardest part of this. It's not hard, it just takes some time, but um, you, I hear you can make these ahead and freeze them. I haven't tried that yet. If you do and it works for you, let me know. But there we have it, guys. Give it a shot. Let me know what you think, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.